The age old question, how to price handyman jobs. This is an absolute phenomenal question that I've been asked so many times and it's really such an integral question into starting up your handyman business and running your handyman business efficiently because if you don't have your pricing set correctly, there's no way that you're ever going to create a sustainable business. So it all starts with pricing and there's really a whole lot to it than just that simple question. So I'm going to dig into that this video, give you guys an exact answer on how to price handyman jobs, how I price handyman jobs, and some good tools and resources that you can use to help you figure out what your pricing needs to be. Now, I just uh, uh, finished up writing this book, The Handyman Pricing Handbook. So I'm going to use this kind of as my template to go through this how to price handyman jobs. It's really a whole lot of fun once you get into it. Um, you know, the biggest thing is the first thing that you need to do is get your mindset right. That's where pricing 100% starts every single time is getting your mindset right and really understanding the fact that you are worth it. The, the value that you bring to the table is worth charging good money for. That's the first thing that you need to understand is that you are worth charging people money for. Not, not only for the work that you do and the physical work that you do, but what's in your head, your mental game that you bring to the table. Just the, the mere fact that you want to start up a handyman business and you want to work on people's houses shows that you have the mental capacity to bring something to their life than, that they already do not have. So that alone is worth value and you need to understand that you are valuable and you are worth charging what you need to charge for. Now that is very important because some of the things that we're gonna dig into later in this video are going to kind of twist that thought a little bit. And you're gonna be like, wow, am I really worth that? Am I really worth that amount of money? And the answer needs to start with, yes, you are worth it. So um, I think I've pounded that in enough. You need to understand, get your mindset right. In this book, we call it the pricing mindset. Very, very important to understand that you are worth it. The, the work that you do is worth it. The tools that you bring to the job are worth it. You know, your family is worth it your kids are worth it, that you are worth charging what you need to charge, okay? The next thing is you need to figure out your, what I call your hourly need, okay? Now this is a very, very important number to know. If you don't know this exact number, there's no way that you can charge correctly. There's no way that you can price correctly in the handyman industry. Um, knowing your numbers is very important and really the only way to do this is with a pen and paper and to figure it out and a calculator, okay? What I always recommend for people to do is go to your bank, right? If you've been in business for, you know, even three months, right? Go to your go to your bank uh, website, right? If you got Wells Fargo, whatever, Bank of America, whatever it is, print out the last three months of bank statements for your business and get a whole bunch of different colored highlighters, right? Different colored highlighters and designate them, right? So. You know, orange is gonna be fast food. Yellow is gonna be tools, right? Expenses, right? Uh, job costs, materials, right? Marketing, things like that, right? You're gonna go through your bank statements, you know, whatever it is, you're gonna go through your bank statements and you're gonna highlight every single expense, money that goes out of your business, right? With a different color and categorize it in a different manner, right? And once you do that, you're gonna have a good snapshot of where money is going out of your business and what your expenses are. This will also help you pinpoint what's unneeded money that you're spending. You might go through this and be like, holy cow, I'm spending a lot on McDonald's, <laughs> right? And you can actually realize that maybe you need to cut back on some McDonald's habit, right? That's gonna help in more ways than one. Um, so doing this figures out what your hourly need is. And you might be asking, well, how is this gonna help me figure out my hourly need? Well, once you have all of your expenses laid out and figured out, then you can now move forward into actually establishing your pricing so that you can make the money that you need to make and add in profit and things like that that we'll get into in a second. So once you have all of your uh, expenses laid out and you know exactly how much expenses are coming out of your business every month, that is what I call your base rate, your base need, right? Um, and then you convert that into an hourly rate, right? So obviously you figure out how many, you know, working hours there are in a year or a month or a week. You know, you could, you could break it down as far as you want. And um, basically 
you figure that out and you multiply that by you know your expenses and figure out or divide that sorry and figure out how much you need to make per hour in order to make that to just to cover expenses right so you've you've taken you know how many uh, how many hours there are in a year how many hours there are in a month and you've divided that by what your expenses are over that month and in, so you've gotten an hourly need you've figured out how much you need to make per hour just to cover your expenses right just to pay the bills in the business okay that's step one now the next step would obviously to be at to add things like break even unknown figures and then profit as well well in this book you know I recommend taking that hourly need and in this book there's a whole bunch of diagrams that'll help you walk you through figuring out what your hourly need is and all of that um, so there's plenty of information in here so once you've figured out what your hourly need is, I recommend adding 20% on that number for what I call a break-even number, right? There's a lot of unknown factors in the handyman business, in business in general. So add in 20% on top of that number for break-even um, unknown figures, right? And then on top of that break-even number, add another 20% for profit, okay? Now this is going to get you your hourly rate, okay? Now there's there's a few a few steps that you want to go through, so you want to make sure that you follow along in the book and uh, get this figured out for yourself because it, it's different for every business. So that's why you know when someone say in Charleston, North Carolina, would would reach out and say, um, "Hey, I'm charging 50 bucks an hour. Am I charging enough?" Right? Someone in Sacramento, California, might not have the right answer for that. And I'll, I'll tell you, you're the only one that can set the correct pricing for your business. Um, because everyone's expenses are different, right? It might be different if um, you know you're a single person. It might be different if if you're the sole provider for your family. Say your wife doesn't work or things like that. So you need to cover all of the expenses, like all of mortgage, you know, all of health insurance, everything like that. And there's no other income in the house covering that. Your hourly rate is going to be a whole lot more than someone else whose wife, you know works as a school teacher or a nurse or whatever and brings in income helps paying for some of the bills so these expenses especially if you are a sole proprietor there's two different ways to do it right there's there's the expenses as a sole proprietor and then expenses as a corporation right so they're they're a little bit different we get more into details in that in the book but um really you need to figure out you know as a sole proprietor all of your own personal stuff is really the business because every all the income you make is income that you've personally made on your personal income taxes that's how sole proprietor works so uh, there's a few different things that you need to figure out make sure that you are covering the expenses that need to be covered if so if you're sole proprietor obviously mortgage health insurance things like that are going to be billed into that hourly rate if you are a corporation you're now paying yourself a paycheck basically you are an employee of the business so therefore that paycheck should cover your you know monthly expenses as a person so that paycheck is going to cover your mortgage so you're basically getting to the same place just doing it two different ways a sole proprietor um, you're paying yourself out of all of the money it makes uh, uh, a corporation you are paying yourself a paycheck and that's paying for all of your expenses so hopefully that makes sense it's more in depth in the book once you've figured out what your hourly rate is and your hourly numbers there's a few other things you want to look into and we go pretty in depth into that you know location demographics competition you know and then break even profit so there's a few other things that you need to look at when you're establishing what your hourly rate needs to be and again right let so let's get into this people might ask Alan why are you talking about an hourly rate I've heard that it's not good to charge by the hour I would agree it's not good to charge by the hour I don't recommend charging by the hour but the reason why we are starting with an hourly rate is because you need to have a base to start at we charge by the job but it's all based on an hourly rate. If you don't know what your expenses are and what your base need is, then every number you're throwing out for a job is really just out of thin air. And you don't know if you're making enough money or not. So it's very important to, to narrow down, figure out what your hourly rate is and what it needs to be so that you can charge by the job. You can charge by the hour. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. If you wanna do that, that's not what I recommend. You know, there's definitely many ways to charge, right? In this book, we talk about charging by the hour, charging by the job, and then charging, you know, half day, full day rates, right? And kind of list pros and cons of that, things I've tried, things I haven't tried, things other handymen have tried um, and failed at and had success at, and really narrow that down, right? And then 
And then after that, right, getting into, this is more of getting into kind of sales and, and estimating, which that's our, our next book that we're going to be releasing in the middle of 2022, um, the Handyman Sales Handbook. But um, getting into additional things that you need to add on to the estimates when you go out and do the work, you know, things like mileage charge, you know, miscellaneous fees, debris, you know, haul off and disposal fees, right? Um, and then that gets you into questions of, should you charge a minimum rate, right? Uh, what I always recommend, if you're going to charge an hourly rate, say your hourly rate is 50 bucks, right? I always recommend, you know, charge, say, 50 bucks an hour with a two-hour minimum. Because by the time you, you know, load up your truck, you go to Home Depot, you pick up the materials, you drive to the client's house, you do the work, you clean up the client's house, you know, you might have to go back to Home Depot, return some stuff, drive back to the office or your home, you've spent about two hours. So any job, even if it's super small, is usually going to take you about two hours. So I always recommend to do at least a two hour minimum. Some guys, you know, if, if, if they got a 50, 50, out, 50 dollar an hour, they might charge 75 bucks for the first hour and then 50 bucks an hour for, for every hour after that. And that's perfectly fine. That's a great way to do it as well. Um, but definitely make sure that you have some sort of a minimum charge, right? So, you know, we have, we have a two hour minimum, but it's not necessarily talked about that it's a two hour minimum because we charge by the job. So we just have a, Hey, we don't take jobs, you know, less than X amount, right? Like that, that's one way to say it. Um, and then, you know, looking in this book, there's a few other things. There's the, the pricing guide, the handyman journey pricing guide, which really gives you a rough idea of how much things cost, how much you should charge for things. But again, that's completely unrealistic because it, it's unrealistic for me to tell someone in Florida what they should be charging to replace a toilet because their expenses are completely different than my expenses, right? So it, it's it's really hard unless you are the person. So you need to do these numbers. If you're if you're listening to this exercise and you're like, ah, oh, I don't want to do that. That's a lot of work, right? You're only hurting yourself. You need to do this. You need to do this right now um, and make sure that you get it done for your business. So it's pricing guide that gives you general ideas. Another great pricing tool that I would recommend you check out. It's called HomeWise.com. H O M E W Y S E dot com. And uh, this is basically a third party website where you can enter in, you know, the job you need done, like say replace a toilet, and then you can enter in your zip code. And it, it, I don't know how it gets all this information, but it basically gives you a price for that toilet in your zip code, kind of a rough, you know, minimum, maximum thing like that. So it's not something that, that I would hold to very tightly, but it's something that will set you on the right ballpark for your area. But at the end of the day, you don't want to compete to uh, be the best. You want to compete to be unique, right? So if, if you are calling around and you're finding out that, you know, most handymen charge 100 bucks to replace a fence post, right? And you have to charge 200 bucks in order to make a profit. Don't lower your rate to 100 bucks, right? But stand firm in your $200 for that post and, and express value. So instead of trying to be the best by lowering your rate, Figure out how to be unique and raise your service to make it more valuable, right? So people will value that $200. So that's really what it's about. That's really the, the whole pricing game is making yourself more valuable. Um, there's really one fun thing that I absolutely loved putting in this book, and it was questions, questions from handymen. And there are like probably like 10 pages or so in this um, of just handymen that I surveyed from all around the world in our, in our handyman journey mastermind group on Facebook and just asking questions, right? And, and me going through and just responding to them all. Um, it really, really cool. Um, you know, it's just amazing hearing people's, you know, questions and, and going through the answers. So that was really a fun thing to do. Um, and so that's something that you might find some amazing, um, you know, amazing resources in is just connecting with other handymen. I would highly recommend you get involved in the handyman journey mastermind group on Facebook. It's a free Facebook group. Um, also check out this handyman pricing handbook. Really got some great info in it. Um, I hope that you learned something from this video. I would absolutely love to hear what one or two takeaways were for you. Uh, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. I would love to hear uh, what your takeaways were as far as pricing. I'm so excited for you guys to dig into your pricing because literally this is what sets your business on a whole nother trajectory. Um, so it's something that you need to do and you need to do it right now. Go ahead, print out those three months of expenses or bank statements and get the highlighters out, highlight them, figure out what your expenses are, 
in your business figure out what the good expenses are what the bad expenses are who knows you may even save yourself 500 bucks a month realizing that you are wasting money on things that aren't needed right so this has a a, a mini fold you know outpouring so it's important check it out thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate each and every one of you you can check out this book on amazon called the handyman pricing handy handbook hope you guys have a great day and we will catch you on the next video